Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the domain and range of this function. So what is the domain and range of this function? So let's, let's discuss that. Now, the domain here is the set of all possible x values that the, this function, that the function can take on. So that's what it is. It's the, all the x values that the function can take on. So how do you identify it? So the thing is you have to, the, the qu way to do that is to notice that, that, you notice that if you look underneath, if you notice this 5x plus 10, 5x plus 10 cannot be negative. Because the reason is you can never take the square root of a negative number. Can you try to plug? Let's see you know, why. Try to plug in your calculator. Uh, uh, try to plug in your calculator. What it, uh, and ask the calculator to, to determine the square root of uh, square root of minus one. What will uh, what will your calculator give you? It'll give you. It can't it can't determine it, right? So it cannot take the square root of, of negative numbers. So five x plus ten cannot be negative. But can 5x plus 10 be 0? Well, yes. If you take the square root of 0, right? If you plug it into your calculator, it's going to be 0. Can 5x plus 10 be positive? Yes, it is. Take a positive number, like example 10. Well, if you take the square root of 10, it's going to, you're going to get some number. So the, th the, the, qu the thing is that the, thing in the quantity inside the square root has to either be 0 or positive. Okay? It can ne the thing in the quantity inside the square root can never be negative. So I hope that makes sense. So what that means words is that 5x, the quantity underneath the square root, which is 5x plus 10, must be either positive, must be either positive, or equal to zero. So we put that's what we put here. This means that 5x plus 10 is either positive or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the constraint. So we require that the quantity inside the square root is either positive or big or positive or equal to zero. That's what this means, greater than or equal to. Okay. So now what we have to do is solve for x. So how do you solve? So this is an inequality. So what we have to do is solve for x. So how do you solve for x? What we're going to do is we're going to do this, you know, what we did. Uh, so in order to solve this inequality, I'm assuming that you already know how to solve inequalities. So uh, I'm assuming you already know to solve inequalities. In, so that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is solve for this inequality. So what I'm going to do is subtract 10 from both sides. So if I subtract 10 from the left-hand side, right, then I must also subtract 10 from the right hand side. So what do we get here? So let me uh, write it here. Let me write it properly. So this is not right the right way, but let's write it here. So I'm going to subtract 10. If I subtract 10 from the left hand side, right? So I just subtract 10 from the left hand side. I must also subtract 10 on the right hand side. Okay. And notice this 10 and this minus 10 cancel each other out. So what we get is 5x is bigger than or equal to minus 10. Now, what do we have to do is solve for x. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by 5. Right? If we divide the left-hand side by 5, I must also divide the right-hand side by 5. So this 5 and this 5 cancel each other out, and we get x and this is bigger than or equal to, well, what's minus 10 over 5? Well, minus 10 over 5 is minus 2. So what do we have here? So that we require that x is bigger than or equal to minus 2. Now, so that's what we require. So we require that x is bigger than or equal to minus 2. There's no, and there's no uh, maximum value that x can take on based on this inequality. So what is the domain here? Well, there's two ways to write the domain. The first way, which we can write, so I'm going to write, I'm going to let D stand for domain. So here, D, let me write it here. Uh, let's write it here. So here, D will stand for domain. Uh, so let me write, sorry, let me write, this is not the way to write it. Let me erase it so it's, I don't think you can see that. So here, I'm going to write, D will stand for domain. Okay. So here, D will be the set of we can use what we do is we write it as the set of all real numbers such that x is bigger than minus 2 so what does that mean in, in math so here the first way we're going to describe the domain in the following way 
and that is the setup. So it's the setup. So we put a curly bracket to signify set. It's a set of all real numbers, right? Here our focus is on real numbers. And there's uh, so the idea is that numbers there's real numbers and there's complex numbers, and our focus will be on real numbers. Numbers like one. So the real numbers like one, two, three, four, five, minus one, minus two, minus three, pi, uh, zero, uh, one over two, one over three. Uh, so on. We're not going to consider like complex numbers. So what we're going to consider is real numbers. So this is why that you that's why they use the symbol to stand for all real numbers. That's the focus. We're excluding complex numbers. So it's the set of real numbers such that this mean this vertical line means such that x is bigger than or equal to minus two. So that's what it is. So let me write this curly bracket properly. Okay, so this means it works. It's the set of all real numbers such that x is bigger than or equal to minus 2. So this is the first way to, way to write the domain. We call this set notation. This one is called set notation. But another way we can write to express the domain in the following using interval notation. So this is the second way to write the domain. And you can write the domain the following way. So notice that we include minus 2, right? Because of this equal to sign, right? This is right here means equal to. So we include minus 2. So when, whenever we include in the value, we include minus 2. So you can see when we include, uh, so since we're including minus 2, we put a square bracket here. Now, that minus 2 is the lowest value. Right, the left, the left point endpoint, uh, left. So that right here, I'm stating is the lowest value that x can take on. Now, what is the highest value that x can take on? Well, if you look at this inequality, there's no higher value. Right. So what we usually do is we put infinity, right, and and infinity, and we put an open bracket on infinity because we because infinity here is is not a number. This is not a number. It's a it's a symbol. Okay, it's not a number, so we put an open bracket. We can't include infinity. It doesn't. If we put a square bracket on infinity, it's like you're, it, what it meaning is that we're including infinity, which means when we include infinity, we're treating infinity as a number. But infinity is not a number, so that's why we put an open bracket on infinity. Okay, so that's why I put an open bracket on infinity. If that part doesn't make sense then think of it as just convention that we convention that we put infinity on here but the idea is you can see that the lowest value that x can be is minus 2 and we include minus 2 because of the equal sign so we put a square bracket here and there's no bound on x there's no maximum value of x so we put infinity here make sense so it's so what it's saying is any value of x bigger than or equal to minus two. That's all it's saying. So this is another way to say it. So x bigger than minus two, bigger or equal to minus two, the same as saying this. Okay. Okay. And there's two ways you can write it this way. This notation right here, this right here means the same as this. There are two ways to write the domain. You can write it using set notation here. And you could also write it in interval notation here. Now the next video, next one is how you determine the range. So how you determine the range. So the range is the set of all possible y values. So let's again, let's look at it. So here's the function. Let me write the function again. It's f of x, which is the square root of, let's see, I forgot the 5x plus 10. Let me just double check that I got the copy the right function. Yep, that's perfect. Right, and you have to put the square of the whole thing. Now, what is the so? What is so the range is what is the range? So range is the all po, all the possible y values that the function can produce. Okay, so here y here what let's let y be y here is our f of x. It's just another way to say f of x. You give me an x, and f of x will give you a y value. So that's why we usually write y as uh, f of x. Okay, so here you can write y is f of x. So you can write this as y equals 5x plus 10. Okay, now what's the view? So this is another key. Notice if you plug into your calculator, if you plug square root of 0, you get 0, right? 
if you plug square root of say one you're going to get one if you plug square root of, of five you're going to get some positive number take square root of let's say ten thousand and one you're going to get some positive number. So notice that if you take the square root of a positive number, you it's go, the, the, the square root of, that, of a positive number will be positive. And if you take the square root of zero, it also is going to be zero. So if A is a number, the square, if A, let's say A is any non-negative number, if A is any non-negative number, the square root of that uh, A will be bigger than or equal to zero. Okay? So if the square root of any not any non-negative number will be bigger than or equal to zero. So the trick is that because you're taking the square root of a quantity, that means y will be bigger than or equal to zero. Okay? So now that's what y is. And no, there's no bound on y. So y could take on any non-negative number, any positive number or, or zero. And there's no bound on, there's no maximum value that y can take on here based on this inequality. So now, what are two ways to write the range? So here, I, let's say here, I'll let r, here r will stand for range. If you didn't catch, so that's what r will stand for. r will stand for range. So here, r, which is the range, will be the set of, will, so there's two ways R will be stand for the range, and it's the set of all possible Y values, and the first way we're going to express the range is through set notation, so it's the set of all, all real numbers, which is what this means, it's the set of all real numbers, such that, that's with the vertical bar, such that Y is bigger than or equal to zero. Okay? And that's what this means. So it's the set, what this says is set of all real numbers such that y is bigger than or equal to zero. And then the second way is to, we can write, is using interval notation, which is, well, the smallest value that y can be is zero. And since we put an equal to sign here, that means we include zero. So we put a square bracket on zero. And, and, and so then, and notice that we don't put a maximum value of y. So we put infinity. And again, by convention, or if you, if convention, we put an open bracket around infinity. And also, I forgot to also mention, we also put an uh, open bracket on minus infinity as well. So I forgot to mention that as well. So this is how you express it. You can express, so again, you can express the range in this way, or you can express the range in this way. Either way is fine. So in the exam, you could write it this way, or you can write it this way. Similarly, you can say the same for the domain as well. In the exam, if the question asks you to find the domain, you can express it this way, or you can express it this way. You don't have to express. You don't have to write it. You don't have to write it. You don't have to write both. You don't have to write the, uh, both. Right? You can just write it. You just have to only write one of them. So you can write it this way, or this way. Choose which one ever you're comfortable with. Same, so, and the same thing for the range. You could choose, you could either write this as your answer for the range, or you can write this as your answer for the range. So I hope this video cleared up, to how, I hope this video helped you to determine the domain and the range of a function. And if you like, you need an online math tutor, uh, please uh, email me, which email me, my email is in the description below. And I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, bye for now. So please, and, and uh, please subscribe, like, share, uh, hit this notification bell, and please share this video with others that definitely will need help, who need help with domain and range. And, I, and also please give me your feedback and how I can make this uh, video uh, better. Uh, I hope, I want your feedback. So thank you so much.